Lord Jesus, please tell me what is on your heart and how we can help. Jesus began, I wish for this community to be saturated in continual thanksgiving and worship, no matter what the conditions. To this end, I gave you the little song, which I'll put up for you tomorrow, dear ones. All of you have the very poisonous habit of complaining silently and in your hearts. Oh, my dear children, please eradicate this tendency. Now is the time, and I am sending you the graces you need to overcome this life-stealing habit. You do not understand the power of your tongue or your words, even those unspoken. And I wanted to add, the Lord is uh, reticent to give us new graces until we learn to use and appreciate what he has already given. And he loves a cheerful giver and is moved to grant them even more than they ask for. Jesus continued, your words form your attitude. They reinforce your perspective on life. That is why Satan worked so hard to make you complain and whine. Would you want to marry a whining husband? Some of you have found yourselves in that situation with your mate, and you know how it drowns out hope, incentive, and love. Yes, it takes the beautiful dynamic of marriage and covers it with effluent. In your marriage, you, your husband, and I cohabitate in the spirit, which means whatever you complain about reflects on me that I have not done a good job providing for you. Don't you know this? Yes, all complaining is against me because I have the power to stop or permit those circumstances that challenge your patience. Rather, you should be asking yourself, Lord, what virtue are you trying to cultivate in me with this weather? The heat is so intense. He continued, Yes, I love that saying in the army. The beatings will stop when morale improves. Beloved ones, none of you could survive in harsh circumstances, so I must prepare you with various difficulties and tests so you do not give in so easily. This is not a pleasant task, I might add, but you can make it more pleasant by thanking me for putting you through your paces. You thwart your progress by turning away and inward from the challenge and complaining. Let me assure you, not one tiny suffering is lost. All are applied to preparing souls to receive me and be saved. Are you praying? Then rest assured, you will receive sufferings to back up your prayers. So when these tests come, you can rejoice, for great is your reward in heaven. Cry out to me, my loved ones, and I will send you help to assist you in that hour. But please take control of your thoughts and words and do not complain. This only makes your job and mine much harder. When you put on the armor, pray for a guard over your hearts and minds not to entertain wicked, unbelieving demons of discouragement who take every opportunity to push back your resolve to endure and be a cheerful giver. None of this sounds easy, but the fruit of self-control is far-reaching and well worth the effort. Dedicate yourself, all your efforts, failures, trials for this nation and the world, because in this hour it is much needed. I bless you now to grow in holiness and long-suffering, that you might obtain the reward that has been set aside for you. Happy will you be in heaven with me on that day, because you learn to be thankful for all things I allow, good or evil. Amen. And this quote came to mind at the end of the message. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. 
Brothers, I for my part do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. Let us then, who are perfectly mature, adopt this attitude. And if you have a different attitude, this too God will reveal to you. Only with regard to what we have attained, continue on the same course. Join with the others in being imitators of me, brothers, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you and now tell you, even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Amen. That's Philippians 3, starting at verse 2. The Lord bless you, dear family, and please receive the grace the Lord is offering us now to put to death every bit of complaining in our hearts and minds and certainly with our words. Amen.